Right, so here's a question then for anybody who's repaired a bit of audio equipment. How many times have you been to buy something and it's been missing things like this? Uh, slider knobs and, you know, bits and bobs of plastic, you know. How many times has it been missing that and it's actually put you off buying it? Well, funnily enough, I recently bought a Marantz amplifier and it was too cheap not to want, not to buy it. I really wanted it. And it was missing a lot of slider knobs and I thought I can go and search for these and you know they won't be correct and they won't be the right size and whatever else. So what did I do? Probably the stupidest thing I could do and I spent more money than the amplifier on a solution. Now we'll get it out there, I have no idea in the world what to do with this thing. Okay, this is a resin based 3D printer. It's called Orange 4K by a company called Longer. I believe it came out last year as part of a Kickstarter. However, it has been renowned for producing the absolute finest quality details. I'm using my best Italian fingers here. The finest quality details for producing uh, quite small parts. So a lot of guys who use it for producing miniatures, it doesn't have the, the kind of lines in it that you would get on the 3D printers that have like a basically a glue gun. So this is the kind that I wanted. I watched loads of reviews and this is the one I went for. So what I'm going to do today is have a quick chat about what we could potentially use it for on the channel and also I am going to fit a different screen to it which I'll explain in a second. So for those of you interested in using one of these for audio repair or for restoring uh, pieces of equipment, audio equipment, I'll explain why I chose this model. This kind of 3D printer has got like a bath here. You fill this bath full of this resin which is reactive to UV light. Inside underneath there is a UV light and there is also a screen. So this screen here is like a phone screen but it's see-through and this produces from what I can understand the kind of a picture on the screen that blocks out the UV light coming up onto this plate and it only allows through certain bits of light and, and it will build your model whatever you tell it upside down on the bottom of this plate and then what you do is you remove this plate slide it off and all of a sudden your model will be produced there now Obviously, we're going to have to do a little bit of measuring and testing. I'm going to make a bit of a series of videos on whether this is going to be feasible for audio repair. But for now, what I want to do is, this screen is basically an LCD screen. And according to Longer's website and a couple of other sources, it's pretty good, you know. But there is also a screen available that is a higher resolution, which will give you smoother prints. So the quality of this screen, the better it is the smoother it'll be at blocking out the light that you don't want in order to give you smoother models on the bottom of this. I hope I'm making sense here. So basically, there is a screen upgrade. And this is a screen upgrade, and this is my first step. This came with it when I bought it. I picked up the, uh, the 3D printer itself off Facebook. It was unused, all boxed up and everything, and this came with it. So this is what's called a mono screen for this printer. There's hardly any videos or information about this printer whatsoever, I believe, because it came as part of a Kickstarter. So I'm going to go through a quick fitting of this today, and just a quick video on a run through on what we can do and what we can't do with this 3D printer in relation to audio repair and what I've been doing on the channel for generating pushers, buttons, knobs, cogs, things like that. So this to me looks basically like an iPhone screen if anybody's ever replaced an iPhone screen. And we're gonna take the top off that 3D printer, have a quick look inside, swap the screen out, and then have a bit of an investigate as to how feasible this is gonna be and what we can actually do in reality to produce parts from this. So being that this is essentially produced from what I can work out in China, there's no real instruction manuals for it. It's not the most amazing thing in the world for reference. So I'm kind of working in a blind here. But what I have got is a guesstimate that these Allen bolts are going to remove this top plate and then we'll be able to remove that screen from underneath. So that's what I'm going to do. Funnily enough, the kit actually came with a lot of Allen keys, which is quite handy. So let's do that. I'll also remove this um, build plate, I think the technical term is for that. I'm learning a little bit about this as we go. Next thing to do then, once those screws are off the top then, is to remove both side panels. That is obviously uh, not easy because it's a different Allen key. 
just to make life more complicated. And is it that one? No. Is it that one? Yep. Look at that high quality, that's just held in with a bit of, bit of masking tape there. Um, not much to this, I'll be honest with you. But I think the next step is to lift this top bit off. Yep. And then we can uh, lift it back and have a look at the screen. So it appears first this, uh, this ribbon cable goes up to the screen there, so we're just going to pop this out using a very technical fingernail. And I believe that in there is the uh, the kind of papery ribbon circuit board thing for the screen. All right, there's the side of our screen there. As you can see, this is uh, the one that's gonna go on. This needs a bloody good clean, I would suggest, to be honest with you, this one is pretty immaculate. So I can only presume that this is glued in so I'm going to try and heat it up from the other side and slowly lift it out without damaging it because I do want a spare. So we'll see how that goes. So after some very gentle hair drying and persuasion, the screen is uh, loose at least. And hopefully I can just thread this board back through here yeah. there we go one screen which i'm going to keep because this is although it is not as good as the one going on it's better than nothing now let's remove the uh, protective cover from our new screen and hopefully we can thread that down into there. Like so. All right. So now that's on there, we've got this little L-shaped thingy jig, ribbon cable, attach it to there, put everything back together, attach that back on there, and we should be good. And that gets stuck onto there. We've got these little lint free cloths. I'm going to give that screen a little bit of a wipe from underneath, in case any fingerprints on it, and then we can stick it all back together. This bit underneath is actually uh, a bit of glass, it's not the actual screen. So it's a good job I didn't push it from underneath because it would have brought the glass and probably the screen as well. And then we should be able to spin this round and attach it back together. I'm not used to taking things apart that are brand new, It's it's... Extremely unusual, if I'm honest. And a little bit more twitchy because it's new and it's been an investment and blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I really don't want to break it. Okay, let's screw that back together. Hopefully now, we just attach this onto there. It should kind of see itself Man, this is horrible. Like right, so. And then our handy dandy high quality, high tech black masking tape should just sit over the top. Like so. Get side panels back on and then we'll do a bit of a plate. Right, that's us together now. So let's take this screen protector off. 
is extremely satisfying, let's be honest. Keep the old one in the box, nice and safe, for when this one no doubt breaks. So what we've got to do now is we've got to kind of set the bed, which means basically telling it where zero is and making sure it's flat. So doing that, I get a piece of paper. Uh, I'm going to turn the unit on. Right, that's us on. Where is the bed thing? This thing, build plate, let's say. That sits on the top of there. And then what you've got to do is Just loosen these allen bolts off. All four of these. These are kind of on uh, nippy washers, spring washers. Let's go with spring washers. Loosen all these off. And then we're going to press the reset button on the front panel, which should set it all the way home. So down there we've got setting, uh, move. And this thing here so resets to zero. So let's do that. Yes. And then that'll do its thing all the way to where it thinks is zero. And that should just squish our piece of paper. So that's where it thinks is zero. And then once that's there. And hold this down semi firmly and tighten these bad boys up. And then this piece of paper should be kind of equally trapped there, which is pretty good. We can slide that out, and that is a set to zero. I lift that back up again to give us a clearance, and then we need to update the firmware to reflect the fact that we've now got a mono screen. So we're going to download the firmware from the Orange website and then install it on the root of the USB stick which does come with it, which is pretty cool. Now that firmware file is on the USB stick root, I think you just plug it in, turn it on and it'll update itself, but we'll see. Right, let's turn this on. Honestly, that firmware was a nightmare to download. It's on a Google Drive, which doesn't really want to work, but I think this will just do its own thing now. But we'll see. Let's have a look, see if we've got the right firmware. It should be 1.33. Alright, second go, for some reason I checked on the USB stick and the file wasn't on it anymore, so whether it self-deletes after it thinks it's done the firmware update, I don't know, but let's try again. It should install and then reset itself. I think wait for reboot to update system is the update. So, oh, 3.3. .3. There we go. So let's test out whether it works. We can turn the LED on. So if we're looking there when I turn it on, LED's on, and then you can test the, uh, the mono. Happy days. Right, well, I hope that that's kind of, I don't know if that's interesting to people, you know, I've been doing a lot of tape deck installs and, and repairs and servicing. Whether that's interesting to you, then, you know, uh, let me know if this is something you want to see. I'm going to do a series of videos, I think, as I uh, attempt to print spare parts to use for these tape decks and, and, you know, whatever we've got, amplifiers and things. I can see a lot of uses for this, primarily for things like sliders, brackets, switches knobs um possibly i don't know what the quality is going to be like on this but things like cogs and wheels especially gears for things like uh the technic stuff it has a as a, a tendency to snap gears and whatever else but uh, so hopefully the next video in the series is going to be i'm going to 
receive some resin, which is the, the goo kind of stuff that creates our 3D printed items. That's coming from Amazon today. I can do a test print on that. And then I'm going to download uh, an audio related file, something like, I don't know, a guitar volume knob or a slider switch or something. Give it a print and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like. And if it's feasible and decent enough quality to be fitted to some audio equipment, I'd be happy. So if anyone's got any tips or hints or, you know, good files or whatever else that they'd like me to have a look at printing and... I'm just hopeful that this is going to be an investment rather than something that's going to sit in the corner and gather dust. But we'll see. All right, thanks.